Hi, and welcome to this tutorial in Xamarin iOS where I'm going to show you how you add a list view inside your iOS application. So open up Xamarin, create a new solution under iOS, Unified API, Universal, and just click a single view application and call it anything you like. So I'm just going to call this my app. Click OK. So once that's loaded, if you recall from an earlier lesson, we have a lot of files and folders over here on the left hand side, and each one corresponds to something that needs to happen inside our iOS app. The one we're going to look at today is simply my app view controller, because it's this view that gets loaded when our app first fires up. So if you double click that, you'll open up a whole bunch of code. Now the method inside this code we're interested in is this, view did load. And Xamarin says, here, perform any additional setup after loading the view, typically from a nib. That just means everything's loaded, we're good to go, so do what you like here. So the first thing we need to do is create our table that's going to hold all of our data. And we do that by calling a UI table view here and we're going to give it a name. Let's call it, I've put an underscore there in case it's not clear, table. There we go. So we call it again, we say table equals new UI table view. And we open up our curly brackets to give it some properties. Click enter. So the first thing we have to tell Xamarin is where to put our table view when it loads up. So to do that, we write frame equals core graphics dot CG route. All this does is define a rectangle. Sorry, I should have put new core graphics CG route there. There we go. So we have to give it a couple of points where the table should start on screen. And we're just going to start it at naught comma naught. And that's going to place the top left-hand corner of the table in the top left-hand part of our screen. And then we have to give our table a size. Now typically, when you're choosing things from a table in iOS, you want it to be the whole width of your device. And to get that, we say view dot bounds dot width. And that gives us the whole width of the device. Then we have to give our CG rect a height. And as you imagine, it's the same kind of idea. View dot bounds dot height. Close our brackets, put our curly brackets in, and then a semicolon. So now we have our table, we need to tell iOS to actually display it. And that's simple enough by going view dot add and you have a choice here. You can either do subview, which will just add one view, or you can do subviews, which will allow you to add many views. Because it's just a table list, you probably can get away with just adding one subview, because that's likely to be the only thing on your screen. So simply add the name table to that and close. And that's it. So if we run that in the simulator, I'm just going to save it click on my iPhone 4S simulator as debug, and then click play. So here's the simulator on the iPhone 4S, and you can see these faint lines across here. And if I click and drag, you can see quite clearly that this is a table. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop that. So the question is, how do we put data into that table? Now, most ways you would think it would happen is somewhere up here, you might say something like table dot, I don't know, let's say properties dot something, and you'd set some sort of list of stuff to display in your table. 
In iOS, it's a little different because they've already created a class to handle all of that. So if you go over to your app, you right click it, and you click Add, New File, and we're going to call this Table Source. And it's just going to be under General and Empty Class. Now that we have our new class, we need to inherit from that specialized class I just explained. And that specialized class is called a UI table view source. But if I start typing it here, it doesn't come up. And that's because we haven't yet included that namespace. So we want using UI kit. And UI kit is just all of the visual elements that you see inside your apps that are done through Xamarin. So now when I go down to table source and I introduce a colon, which is just a fancy way of saying inherit from another class, if you're not familiar, I can now say UI table view source. Okay, and if you're not familiar with inheritance, this simply means that my class called table source is going to be an exact copy of UI table view source. But there's one difference, and the difference is that I can come in here and I can define some sort of function, some sort of method, or any variables, and then they get added to my table source class. If I try to use those same methods and variables inside the UI table view source class, I wouldn't be able to access them. So in a way, table source is like a child of UI table view source. It just has some extra properties and extra functions that it can do. Okay, let's define some variables to hold the things that will be in our table. And the first thing we're gonna do is create an array to just hold a bunch of strings. So we're going to define it as a string array and we're going to call this table items. Then we need something to identify each cell and that's just a name that we give it and we'll call it cell identifier equals to table cell. Now inside our table source, we're going to receive, every time we instantiate this class, we're going to receive the variables to put inside our table. It's a bit of a roundabout the houses way of doing it, but it makes sense in the end. So inside table source, we're going to get a string of items that we want displayed. And because it's coming here, we need to transfer it here to table items. So we're just going to say table items is equal to items and save that. Okay, so now we have all of the things that we want to put inside our table. We need to do a few more things inside this class. So create some space and you're going to do what's called an override. So we're going to override some methods that are already inside this class. And in particular, we're going to override rows in section. Like so. And that returns, as you can see, something called a nint. Now previously that was an int, but ever since Xamarin moved to the 64-bit API, and you know that as the unified appy when you start up the program, you now need to have this different array of variable identifiers. And that is just a clever way of Xamarin taking care of all the 64-bit, 32-bit nonsense in the background. And just so you know, if you're looking through the internet and you find some kind of Xamarin code that says int, chances are you might have to change this to an int so it actually compiles correctly. Okay, 
And so inside Rosen's section, we're basically saying, how many rows should I have in this table? So you just say, return table items dot length. And that just says, how many items are inside my table? And I will make the appropriate number of cells for that. So speaking of cells, we need to actually create the cells. And again, we're going to override something called a get cell method here. And if you look here, you can see that it returns a UI table view cell. And that's exactly what we want. And it's going to return one of these for each variable inside your table items. OK, so if you know mobile devices, you'll know that memory is limited, processing power is limited, and battery is limited. And for those reasons, mobile app development takes a few different routes compared to normal software, uh, desktop software development. And one of those we're going to see here. So inside this get cell method, we're just going to delete this. And we're going to start by saying UI table view cell, cell. So we've just defined a cell is equal to the table view dot DQ reusable cell. And then we pass an argument to it, which is just the identifier we had before, which would be cell identifier. Now, what's this saying is that if our table scrolls out of view and one of the cells we can't see anymore, it doesn't serve any function. So what iOS does is it grabs that cell and all of its resources and gives it back to you as a recycled cell. So you don't have to go through all the horrible bits of getting rid of the cell, getting rid of all your contents and memory, and then reloading a whole bunch of new stuff. All it does is recycle it, and that is much, much quicker to do. Okay, so on the off chance that we don't actually have a reusable cell, we need to create one. So we check that we don't actually have a cell, in which case it would be null. And if we don't have one, we're going to say our cell is equal to a new UI table view cell. And we're going to give it some sort of style and properties. So if we go over here and we scroll through this one of five, I'll show you the one we're going to give it. Hang on, I think I need to use the arrows. There we go. We're actually going to give it this one. We're going to give it a standard style that comes with the methods of this. And then we're going to give it a reuse identifier so we can reuse it later. And the first thing we're going to do is give it that style. So UI table view cell style. And if you scroll down here, you have a lot of different selections you can have. We're just going to choose default for now. And then we're going to say what our reuse identifier is. And we will call that cell identifier. Okay. So all of that just gets our cell for us or gets a recycled cell. And now that we have our cell, we need to give it some sort of text. So we're going to say cell dot text label dot text is equal to our table items from before. And then we need to give it an index. So we say our index path dot row. So which row it is. Close that up. And then finally, we want to return that cell. Okay, so we have our cell, we have our table view, 
but we don't actually have any data to display yet. To display your data, you go back to your view controller, and this is where we actually define it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to, actually, let's put it here. Let's just say string data equals new string. And then we're going to define an array of strings. So I'm going to just make this an array of colors. I'm going to say blue, comma, red, comma, green, comma, brown. So we have four colors there. Close that off and seal it up. Now, if you recall before, I said that iOS goes in a kind of roundabout way of doing this. So inside your view controller, you're going to create or get your data from somewhere that you want to display in your table. Then what you're going to do is you're going to send it off to the table source. The table source is going to assemble all of your cells inside that table using that data, and then it's going to give it all back to your table view, so it comes right back here. And so the question is, how do we put this data, which goes into table source, into this table? And we do that using the source variable and we say equals to new table source because if you recall that's what we've just called our source class up at the top there and then because our table source asks for a string of items that's what we're going to give it and in this case we've got a string called data so we're going to pass it that Oh, we don't want the semicolon there. Okay, so save that and now run it inside your emulator. Here we go. And as you can see, we have a table and it's loaded up blue, red, green, and brown. But you'll notice the table starts right at the top of your screen. So let's just fix that. Click stop and come down here and recall where you defined where your frame is. You said zero, zero. So it started in the top left hand corner. And what we want to do is shift it down by a little. So we're going to change the second value to let's say 30. See if that gives it a little more room. There we go. That's a lot better. Okay. Now there's just one other thing that I should mention at this point. If you move something down by 30, but you make it the same height as your view, it's now going to sink 30 pixels below your view. And if you had a really long list, in fact, let's do it. Let's make a really long list. Let's say Control C comma, control V, comma, control V. So now I have a list of 12 items going from blue to brown, blue to brown, blue to brown. So always remember the last one is brown here. And if we run that in the simulator, let's look at what happens. We can scroll down, but you'll notice the last brown down here is almost off your screen. If we come back to Xamarin, that's because we dropped the top by 30, but we didn't compensate for that over here. So what we do here is say minus 30. And now when we load up our simulator, it should be all good. So there you go, brown, directly at the bottom of the screen. Okay, that concludes this tutorial. But in the next tutorial, I'm going to follow on directly from what I've done here, and we're going to learn how to click some of these cells 
and make something happen. So join me for the next tutorial.